Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. I think this earthquake was fairly significant. It was only a magnitude 3.6, about 7 miles west southwest of Huron, California. 37 people reportedly felt this earthquake. This was a reverse strike-slip earthquake. A reverse earthquake is where one side of the fault rises up and the other stays in position and then the fault line moves. So looking at how wide on the moment tensor ball this one side of the fault zone lifted up, I was wondering how far was the rupture. I had to do a bit of digging, but when I found the page on USGS for the rupture distance, it was like, oh my God. Makes me wonder how high what they call the scarp, the uplift on the ground would be. Even so, it moved over 100 kilometers, which would be about 60 miles right there. And then the farthest distance they have would be 200 kilometers, which would be 120 miles. Using Google Earth, here's the location of that earthquake, and I drew out 30 miles on each side, which would be 100 kilometers of the uplift. I just now added a second line to show 50 miles. Now they're saying 100 miles of uplift. Using the direction of the moment tensor ball, let me zoom in and we'll come out. Okay, the top line would be 30 miles. The bottom line would be 50 miles. Yeah, it could have gone through um, Corcoran, this fault line. Uh, there's another little town here. Joaquina, there's an airport. There's actually two airports here. Let's see, we got this one right there. Sailor Farms Airport. Where's the other one right there? Uh, Coran, Corcoran Airport. Felt reports as far north as Mariposa. Um... Los Banos, what else we got here? Gustine, uh, Santa Cruz, remember the fault? Looks like it moved in this direction. Um, Porterville, Colinga, Huron, Evanel. Oh, we got there, Fresno. Another response from Fresno. And then we got Bakersfield down here. One response from there. Oh, there's some more down here. Okay, we got um, Lompoc. Sorry for pronouncing it wrong. And, and Camarillo. Oh, there's another one. Ontario, it says. Now, in 1983, Kalinga had a 6.5 earthquake. It's probably the same fault, fault zone. That one, too, was a reverse earthquake. And that one moved anywhere from 1 to 2 feet. It caused heavy damage to the downtown area and disrupted the oil fields in that area also. This 3.6 was originally a magnitude 4.0, which USGS downgraded, more likely because so few people reportedly felt it. As you know, any earthquake has a 20% chance of being a foreshock for an earthquake much larger. They often said in the past within a week, but now they know that it could happen within a year. Because the rupture distance was so great, I would be prepared for a much larger earthquake. This earthquake was about five and a half miles below sea level. All earthquakes are measured from sea level. It had an intensity level of four, 
which is considered uh, light. And the reason it happened, we got pressure coming from the north going south. We have pressure from the south going north. And one side of the fault line popped up. So did you feel this earthquake? This was very significant. Did you have light damage to your house? Cracks in the walls, cracks in the foundation? If so, please put your comments down below. Thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you're still subscribed. I'm also on Twitter and I'm also on Patreon if you wish to support my work. Always be prepared for a disaster. Yeah, this was very significant. Please stay safe and I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.